Could you just tell us like why you created Selenium? What was your thought, and did you ever think it'd get as big as it actually got? Right. I mean, so it's 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 how much time do you have, right? So <laughs> I, I have no short stories. So when we so I was the tech lead on this project, um, and Jim Evans at the uh, SauceCon this week gave um, a couple of a, a version of it. It's mostly mostly correct. Um, but what came down to, I was a tech lead on a project, um, <clears throat> and so we had. 10 or so people working. We're working on an internal time and expense yep. tool. Um, and the, the mandate for this was it, was, it had to be fast. Because it, if you're a consulting firm, really your only internal system that you care about is, a, is the billing system. So you can <laughs> get paid. Um, and at the time, the company I was at, ThoughtWorks, they were expanding globally. Uh, it used to be just Chicago, but then they were expanding in, uh, in England and India and whatever. So all of a sudden, the latency that was fine, that local area network in Chicago, all of a sudden it was a huge problem when people from London were connecting to the Chicago okay. system. So yep. the current system was like super slow. So it had to be fast, fast, fast. That sets the context for why, for details I, I did later. Yep. So um, this is actually 2003, 2004, still actually kind of in like the dot-com yeah. nuclear winter right, yeah, of sorts. Yeah, yeah. So there wasn't a lot of budget to do really anything, but we had basically people threatening mutiny in London and India, just over latency to like Chicago right. headquarters. So that, that's kind of, that sets the scene. So, um, hey, it's, it's 2003, 2004. Let's do this web thing, right? Um, you know, it's been around for a while. Let's th so the previous app was a Lotus Notes app. Yep. We're going to do a web app, right? Very specific thing though, when it gets actually you know, fast forwarding to Selenium, we wanted to, in a, in a time, in a timesheet or a billing kind of context, uh, we wanted to have this little web form and we wanted to have, if you had more than 10 items in your expense report or whatever you want to add a row. Yep. The state of the art in a web app would be to like send that whole thing to the server. The server will do all the rendering, adding rows to each email tables and send it back. Um, and I, but I knew with like a whole couple hundred consultants, that's going to be a high latency. It's not going to be fast. Right. So um, I had this idea like, wait a second, actually, if you go into this, this JavaScript thing, like you can, you can modify the web page and like add, you can change the page however you want. And you can avoid a trip to the server. It's awesome. The downside is that at the time, JavaScript was super flaky and inconsistent between all the different browsers. Right. Yep. So we had very uh, strong discussions uh, amongst the other engineers where it's like, you shouldn't use JavaScript. JavaScript is, using JavaScript is a career limiting move. It is a bad idea and you're a bad person <laughs> and you should feel bad for using JavaScript. This is like 2003, 2004. Yeah, yeah. This is 2004. Right. So we actually, I, I let them win the argument for a month. We re-architected it so everything went to the server yeah. and came back and then it, of course it was slow. Um, it's like, no, screw it. <laughs> so um, we put in the code to add, just like to dynamically add a row to your expense report. Yeah. And, but then, as it proved out to be, it, it, we had, I call it like the sine wave of quality, where it, what would happen was it would work in an, an explorer one week, and then someone would change something, and all of a sudden, um, it would now be working in Firefox. This is actually pre-Firefox 1.0. This is like Firefox 0.9. Wow. Mozilla was the browser at the time. Uh, so it would be, they would be, it would be working in Firefox, but they would accidentally break in IE. Of course, they didn't test it in IE because their personal browser yep. was Mozilla or whatever. And so every other week, it was like working in one of those browsers. So it's like, that was annoying. That was like requirement number one. Like, okay, I want to, I can't get them to test all the browsers all the time every time they touch something. So I want to, I want to test in two browsers. Um, it was also annoying that just things were breaking that were working yesterday. So I want something as kind of like a regression, kind of a check yep. before they push. Um, I implemented this one rule of like, there has to be at least one functional test for whatever you do um, before you put it in production. Anyway, so I wanted to have a test. So, um, and it was frustrating. And the, in that context of the state of the art, whether it was open source or commercial tools, because everyone considered JavaScript a horrible, bad idea, the open source tools, you could only ever do like regular expressions on like the HTTP response, like the text right. like mechanized is a very popular tool. And all it did was do assertions on the text response. Yep. It didn't assume you'd be doing assertions on the browser, the rendered page. Right? Right. And the commercial tools uh, would because you know Microsoft had like ninety five percent market share. Why would you test any other browser? Like right, I had other right, conversations about true. that. Why right, would right, you care about two browsers? Right, right. That's pointless. It's just a bunch of hippies uh, <laughs> care about the other stuff. Oh, and that Apple thing. Uh, you know, Apple's dead, right? Um, I mean, again, this is the world. People right? don't realize that, but that's right. Two thousand four like. right. JavaScript yes. preliminary move. Apple, yeah, that's kind of that's cute, but right. like we don't <laughs> do video processing. We don't do you know whatever. Um, but we were like a trend-setting consulting company, so we had everyone had MacBooks and right. 2004, and everyone was using Mozilla, whatever. So, so I didn't want to create a testing tool. Sorry, again, long story. Sorry. Oh, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> um, 
and we, we and we sought out other open source tools. The closest was uh, the uh, JS unit, so mm -hmm. the JavaScript unit. Like it was in a browser, kind of rendering stuff, but it was very unit fo test focused, not functional test. Like it didn't know how to go from page to page to page, right. just in one page. Also, there was another one. Um, uh, HTML unit was a Java project, and okay. it kind of it was like a headless browser. It had a kind of a JavaScript thing, but it, it wasn't a real browser, so it, it you couldn't tell if that matched a real browser right. experience, right? So again, like the requirement was two browsers, like one test drive two browsers, and assuming you're going to be interacting with some kind of JavaScript app and doing assertions like after JavaScript did something interesting. Yep. Um, so there was really nothing. Um, so I actually took a, a break from the project I was leading, kind of to start a side project, we kind of, you know, found a conference room and just like um, disappeared for a month. It was me and um, two other uh, thought workers, Paul Gross and then Gina, uh, sorry, G, Tina, she goes by Tina, uh, Wang. There's the three of us working on a month, uh, for like a month on this first thing. Yep. Uh, and then we had it and, and uh, the people came by. I actually thought we were gonna be famous for this time and expense app. <laughs> that we were making it was super super cool right, right. that was a whole other story where we like evaluated all the time and expense yep. things that were out there of course like you know big surprise for a consulting firm we did a review of all the packaged apps and we came with the expert decision that we were gonna have to write it a custom package ourselves but i really thought that the time and expense thing was going to be interesting but people came up to me after like after we um got it up and running we had the ie tests and the mozilla uh, firefox tests uh, and it was actually fun to watch, right? Turn on the monitor yeah. and see it go. Yep. You no, know, like a lot, a lot of people, I hadn't like really kind of seen that yep. kind of. It's kind of fun. It's it's really fun. It is. Sometimes when I'm in, like, it would be running on the da computers in my office, and I would forget that it's at the top of the hour. I would. It's kind of like a poor man's, um, poor person's CI system, where you just like link it to a batch file, schedule it to run at the top yep. of the hour. And sometimes I'd forget. It's kind of like Big Ben, you know, blasting. All of a sudden, <laughs> I hear this clicking from the computer. Uh, the monitor would be off, but IE sends when you click. Eh, whatever. Well, too long of a story. But um, people would come and and ask me about our testing tool. I I wanted to talk and pivot to the time and expense app. Right, right. That was super super yeah, cool. Yeah. This is just one part of it. Um, so I think to answer your other question. I think I realized it was like a thing yeah. when I got when I kept on getting more questions about it. I think we're. Uh, completely unsolicited I started getting invitations to talk about it at other places like other consultants at ThoughtWorks were in other people in London and whatever were telling their clients about it oh, cool. that was actually one of the things that uh, made it easier it was easier to open source it to get it to our clients some of them had really weird procurement policies yep. so it was easier just to open source it to get it, download it as okay. opposed to negotiate some kind yep. of agreement so once it was kind of out there people would start using it and start having questions right. and then it just kind of uh took on a life of its own. Anyway, super long story. <laughs> oh, very cool. no, that's awesome. But it came from a very technical thing yeah. and I didn't want to test start a, yeah. create a testing tool, but it like fell into it. I didn't know at the time there was a testing industry, there were books, there was like you could have an entire career in right. it. It was just like this annoying problem where yep. JavaScript was like bumming me out. Yeah, so you anyway. had a, a problem, you scratched your own itch and right. all of a sudden it, a lot of people right. really benefited from it. Right. Sorry, it's super long story. No, it's cool. <laughs>